Hey chatters, back here with Urosh. We are definitely in experimentation mode here. We somewhat recently started playing with this Obsidian plugin called Cannoli, which allows us to set up in sort of our Canvas environment some fun LLM related workflows. But we have no idea how to use it. There's some pretty good, okay documentation that comes with it. But I'm at the point where I feel like I can do anything and I'm having trouble doing one thing. <laughs> I decided, okay, what is something like simple proof of concept that's fairly repeatable? One of the blogs I do with AI is my Miss Neuro blog, which is just like teaching about AI stuff in an accessible way. And it has the same sections every single time. So I figured why not just try to create a cannoli flow that will help write this blog. So let me walk through what we have here and more or less how it works in its V1 stage. Look my pretty face, uh, just for the views. Yeah. And also to help me think through like how to make this better. <laughs> Slash, if you don't get anything, something, just tell me. I'll try to I'll see if I can explain. So up top here, we have these three floating gray boxes. So if you have a floating gray box and you put a word in just these normal like single square brackets, that now becomes a variable. So wherever else I put audience in these square brackets, essentially, it will treat it as whatever else is in that box, right? So since we're doing a blog and we might want to change a couple things once in a while, I've defined audience, our topic, and the tone that I want to go for as just like these random variables. Next, we have the structure of the blog. So I have here, pretend this is like me prompting an LLM. It just says, create a succinct outline for a blog on topic. And for, for the, vari the floating variables, you have to put them both in the two squiggly brackets, as well as the single bracket for it to reference it correctly. Uh, in tone for audience following the below format. And here I just have a quick little breakdown of what I'm expecting for the format. And I'm realizing I can probably get rid of this. When I was first playing with this, I was trying to use another blog to be like, okay, do it like in this way and tone. But I haven't quite figured that out yet. I just started like writing blogs on that blog. Got to figure that out. Okay. Now we come to the next one. And what you can do is when you're leaving, this is green right now because I've already run it, but typically this will be uh, gray. And I guess let me just say that a gray box acts as like your system prompt, kind of like what I was saying, whereas a purple box like down here acts as the completion. So like you can see what the LLM is saying or like what the output is. But anyways, you can also create variables by defining them with the arrows. Just by putting outline here, this now becomes the variable outline. So down here, I'm giving it now, okay, so you have, you know, this as your outline. Now let's draft the, just the introduction section of the blog with outline, topic, tone, audience, as Miss Nora, write only your section. So the idea here is now it will write that introduction section and it will output it in here. Now I figured just to get fancy, what I could do is I could actually have it act as an editor of the section too. So now I have another prompt right here, which is just act as an expert in artificial intelligence on topic and tone for audience and constructively critique the section of this blog while maintaining the tone, develop a bullet point list of actionable edits to improve the blog section. Now, if we wanted to, just to see what it came up with, we could create another empty purple box, but you don't have to. You can just pass that forward because we don't really need to see that part. It's going to be fine. And so now I have two things going on. I have the original coming down here, as well as the bullet points that we created for the feedback. And I'm saying respond with the comprehensive edited blog section based on the feedback. I'll put only the introduction, nothing before or after. And here you can see I give it a nice little example so it actually listens to me. So we'll come down here in a minute, but we're just going to continue on. I didn't do the whole blog because I didn't want to like, I started that way and I was just wasting so many API calls. But now we continue on to the next section. So we turn the intro into a variable so that it will pass on whatever the intro was onto here. 
And I'm just saying essentially continue to the next section, history and development. And then it's the same exact thing. It outputs, it critiques, and then it responds. And the thing that I was having the most trouble with was, yes, I could be somewhat manual. Yeah. yeah, I could be somewhat manual and have it output the final thing and then copy and paste, but it's, nah, we want to automate this whole thing. So technically what we could do is like, hey, you write the code, you test the code, you write the test cases for the code, you run it, and iterate and iterate and iterate, something like that. Not that I know to code, but it sounds amazing. <laughs> There's definitely a way to do this as more of a loop, I'm sure, but I haven't gotten that far. You can also do actions in this, which is wild. I saw that. Where is it? Yeah, action nodes. You just write the JSON or whatever. Okay, cannoli complete. Te Technics nope, copy, paste the whole uh, boxes every, just go to the right couple more times for sections. Yeah, that's my plan right, is to just do all the sections. Okay, let's see if this did both sections. It did. And then, I don't know, I'm still going to try to figure it out so it automatically creates a new note based on this, but that shouldn't be too hard. Anyway, okay. so that's the cannoli. It's very complicated to start, but once you start figuring it out, it's very exciting. And what I'm excited to do because you can reference other notes throughout this process, is you can start to make agents that are specific for each box that do a certain thing instead of these just half-baked prompts that I have in here. You can also nice. do chatting, I think, with it. I don't know. You can see this is all the, the documentation. And it's not... What's tough with this and with Obsidian in general is a lot of these plugins don't have a lot of documentation and there's not a lot of videos online of people like playing with them and using them, especially for these like less known ones. So you just have to figure it out. <laughs> I tried to, to look at it last night and I was like, oops, this is too much. And then I wanted to export it to make a GPT that's going to be my like, hey, make me a flow for this, guide me how to do it. But the GPT was not able to read the HTML that I exported because it was badly exported. Then I tried smart connections like you did and that didn't work well. And I was like, okay, yeah. if I need to do it with myself, I'll wait for Joe. Yes. <laughs> so I think I've, I've figured out like beginner stages. So I'll try to document this like a little bit more proactively to simplify. You can, I, yeah, to I, I don't have time. I really don't. <laughs> I know. That we'll see. Thank you for inviting me. I was not much of help, but <laughs> it was a pleasure. Uh, look, well, you hopefully, work. hopefully you will find time to experiment a little bit. And next time you'll teach me a text generator. Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm using it super basic, but for, for my note needs, it's super, you know, chef's kiss. And you got to start basic anyway, before you can start really layering on the complexity. Yeah. So I, I think like two months from now, we're going to have like, a folder for agents, a folder for prompts, folder for all for specific plugins, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, Joe. Take I'll care. catch you later.